the nature of humanity. One day we will have the unfallen nature of God When I breathe that yes. air in, it is from God. It's His breath that He's breathed into us. Take my character upon you. And when we make choices, are we believing what God has said and making choices in line with that? Welcome, friends. Thank you for joining us again to the I Believe podcast series. I do hope that uh, you are doing well. And as we consider the topic for today, and I know we will have a wonderful conversation today, Pastor Don. Uh, but before we do anything, uh, seeing that we're speaking about the Word of God, let us close our eyes for prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that you love us. We thank you, Father, that uh, we are made in your image. And because of that, Lord, we are yearning to be with you soon and very soon. I pray, Father, as we discuss this wonderful topic, today, Lord, uh, that it might be a blessing to those listening as well of, as those presenting. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm thankful for our topic today, that we're talking about the nature of humanity. I think through this discussion, this conversation, we'll be able to understand ourselves better. Yeah, so we are dealing with uh, topic number seven, uh, and as we are making our way through um, uh, 28 fundamental beliefs and what we believe uh, as uh, Christians and Adventists, uh, we are also seeing what others believe and how it has impacted their life. And we've got another guest. Um, I think there's something good about the number seven. All right? I'm sure there's <laughs> a whole lot of biblical <laughs> references we can make use of, but we are yet uh, so we won't say guest number seven is more than just a number. It's our very own Dion Elstad. And uh, thank you so much for, for being here, for saying yes. And uh, yeah, and I know it was easy for him to say yes because we said we're going to speak about the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so, and Uncle so, Dion yeah. loves Bible study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he's, he's, he's at our Silverleaf congregation, very involved. And we love him and his mm. family. And uh, they've got a special place for us. But maybe uh, just for for those that don't know you, uh, you know, maybe just if you would be so kind just to tell us where you're from, just a little background and your journey to how you came to be at Silverleaf Church. Well, thank you very much for this privilege. It is really a privilege and I do not take it for granted. Well, in 1972, I was baptized at the age of 14 years with my sisters and uh, then I left school and uh, joined the National Defense Force. Okay. Not a good place to be as a Christian. <laughs> okay. uh, had some difficult times there, uh, you know, practicing your, your, your faith. faith and, mm. you know, being with Christ, to walk with Christ. And then the wheels of the bus came off. Okay. Totally. And in approximately 1985, um, I attended a camp meeting at Sedaven, and there uh, I recommitted my life mm. to the Lord. Amen. And uh, there was a special prayer for me by the pastor, and dedicating my life again through the Holy Spirit. Mm. And that's where the big change came in my life. Mm. And that was to me meant much more to me, and I'm sorry to say this, than my baptism self. I felt I was maybe a bit young and didn't understand the whole picture, mm -hmm. but that, that was wonderful. I, st I still served in the Defense Force and uh, still went right through till retirement age. Um, but the secret of having a meaningful relationship with Christ, I found, 
is being involved in the body of Christ, Amen. the church of Christ. Amen. And that led to the next thing in being more involved in my spiritual home relationship with God, spending more time with God, really studying with God. And uh, that I want to recommend to each and everybody, get involved in your church activities mm -hmm. where you are, yes. and God will lead you through the Holy Spirit. And I, and I can see Uncle Dion practicing that. Yes. Um, you know, how you serve at church, you're very involved, um, also as our head deacon at church currently, but also like giving Bible studies, getting involved. I mean, I think you, you, you're demonstrating that very encouragement in your own life, and I appreciate that. that. Well, in uh, 2005, how did I get to Silver Leaf Church? Tell us more. <laughs> was through my daughter, Liesl, as we were staying at that stage in Bredasdorp, and Liesl was at ten, my daughter attending Stellenbosch University, and this is the church where she preferred to come. And after Liesl uh, graduated, my son came and he studied uh, theology here at Helderberg College. And uh, when we came to visit, this is where we attended with our children, we attended Silverleaf Church. Mm -hmm. And when he left and I retired in 2018, the logical mm. thing was, I know people now, some people in Silverleaf Church, yes. and this is where I'm going to feel comfortable. Okay. And that is what led to the decision to transfer our membership from Langebaanweg at that stage now uh, to Silverleaf Church. So being a visitor yeah. for a number of years first, and then <laughs> yes. when you moved here, well... A permanent visit. <laughs> yeah. We're happy yeah. for that. No, thank you okay. so much for that uh, little background there. Um, so as we now get into our, our discussion or our conversation on our, our theme for the day, I thought let's, let's read the fundamental belief yes. statement on the nature of humanity. So let's read it together. Um, it says, man and woman were made in the image of God with individuality the power and freedom to think and to do. Mm -hmm. Though created free beings, each is an indivisible unity of body, mind, and spirit, dependent upon God for life and breath and all else. When our first parents disobeyed God, they denied their dependence upon Him and fell from their high position. The image of God in them was marred, and they became subject to death. Their descendants share this fallen nature and its consequences. They are born with weaknesses and tendencies to evil. But God in Christ reconciled the world to himself and by his spirit restores in penitent mortals the image of their maker. Created for the glory of God, they are called to love him and one another and to care for their environment. And there's a number of um, supporting scripture verses yes. there. Powerful fundamental yes, belief statement. So. Yes, yes. So, this whole podcast series is the I Believe podcast series. Mm -hmm. So, we would like to ask you, Uncle Dion, what do you believe about the nature of humanity and why do you believe that? If we want to go back to the nature of humanity, I believe we should go back to the creation, mm -hmm. as we've just read about mm -hmm. the image of God. Mm -hmm. And, uh, that's, that's Genesis. <laughs> yes, we need to go back to Genesis. Yes, and it's a logical to, place to start. Yes, and then we need to go and we need to have a look. How did God create us in his image mm. and what happened to that image as we have just read? Mm. So we can go back to Genesis 1. And I just want to say something here, and I mentioned it to Pastor Ezra, I think, Sabbath, God spoke everything into being by the breath of God. Everything except one, mm -hmm. and that is man. Mm -hmm. God took time to create man in his image. He did not speak mm -hmm. man into being, mm -hmm. and then also making us according to his image. Mm -hmm. So let's let's read that. So wh where should we should we let's read maybe Genesis one twenty six to twenty eight. Mm -hmm. yes. um, maybe I'll read that for us. 
I've got the New King James Version here. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should also read in Genesis chapter 2 mm. um, about where God formed us from the dust of yes. the ground. Chapter 2, verse 7. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uncle Dion, will you read that for us? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Yes, and I'm uh, reading also from the King New King James Version. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Mm. And that's where, as some translations have, a living being have a living soul. Mm. And a lot of confusion surrounds that point of the soul. And here you have an inanimate body made from the dust of the earth. And God comes and he breathes the breath of life into it. And every day I still thank the Lord. When I breathe that mm -hmm. air in, it is from God. It's his breath that he's breathed into us. And we mustn't take it for granted. Just thinking of that fundamental belief statement, sorry to interrupt, <laughs> how like we're dependent on God mm -hmm. for life. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, He gives life. I mean, it was His, the breath of life that He imparted. Correct. But if we take one of these components away, the soul ceases to exist. The soul cannot be something else. It is the inanimate body made of dust, with the breath of God breathing life into it, which creates a soul. So this is important because I think understanding this can also help us with, um, we, let's say, dangers that exist um, that mm -hmm. are, are prevalent today as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, understanding this. So, so what can we, so if I'm hearing what you're saying, the dust of the ground plus the breath of life, then man Mine says man became mm -hmm, a living being. So it's not, um, it's those two together make up you being a living soul yes. or a living being. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, maybe do you want to tell us some more about that? Like, why is that important for us to, to know? Like, we need to know that what happens to us if God receives the breath of life He's okay. given us when it goes back okay. to Him. So now, this is creation, but now we're thinking of the opposite of yes, creation. Yes, okay. Because of sin, yes. uh, God did not intend that we should die. But I'm just bringing it in yes. here so that we can know this is part of the nature of man after the fall of man. Yes, important. True. And uh, so there's no soul that goes back to God. It's just the breath of God that returns to him. And if you take the breath of God and it returns to him, what happens to that which was created out of dust goes back to dust. Mm. Thinking from dust to dust, ashes to ashes, you know what we normally <laughs> yeah. say. I think there is also a, a yearning in, in, in us today to return to a certain degree, well, I don't know, to, to a large degree, <laughs> to that state. That state before, because we're talking uh, pre-fall, yes. before sin, when we were perfect. Correct when we were made in the image of God. You were made in the image of God. We are thankful for our bodies now, you know, but this is not it. <laughs> no, not. We can use as much moisturizer as we want. <laughs> we, you know, sometimes we, uh, I see they sell this anti-aging <laughs> cream, <laughs> you know, trying to return no. back and reverse back. Um, so there's this yearning in us, you know, uh, and constantly people are always, uh, you know, I don't have issue with people doing it, but they do plastic surgery. They're trying to modify themselves, mm. you know. Um, and, 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 and besides that, there's also a huge push for living healthy. 
you know, within the Christian context and without, without. So, we, so when we say returning back, is 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 that the, if the if, you know, is that God still in us? Is there something about God in us that that still wants to return to that state and um, not to jump the gun? But how do we get there? You know, uh, or or at least I should ask why why is it so important to understand our origins? Uh, in this sense. So maybe what we can do, I, I'm thinking, maybe we can chat about what is the image of God in us. Yes. Mm. And then, like you're saying, God wants to restore us back to how he mm. created us. So maybe let's, yeah. let's consider the image of God. And then we see, okay, what is that process? How, how does I God agree. get us back to there? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. So Uncle Dion, what, what, what do you think it means? What does it mean to you? What do you believe about being created in the image of God? We read it now in Genesis 1, 26. I would believe that it is not just the form uh, that, that, that we look at. Okay. It's more than just the okay. form. It's emotions that mm. we have and that we live with. Mm. Although our emotions okay. is also marred by sin. Yeah. Mm. But God has given us to the the, 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 the way to love each other Amen. and to care for each other. If we look at what God has given us and how we should treat our fellow human beings, okay. that is part of the image of God. God. Yes. It's like that relational yes. yeah. dimension. Yes. Mm -hmm. This that we are experiencing now is, is <laughs> not normal what God intended. The separation. The separation, no. Uh, yeah. okay. God made us social beings. Yeah, okay, so that's part and of being created in God's image. It, to me, yes. That's been and, part of that. And we've just, pre, the previous conversations we've had were on, on God, the doctrine of God, and we saw, I mean, God is Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, that is a relationship in itself. Yes. <laughs> so I, I can see, like, being created in the image of God, mm. like one being created in God's image is... You know, to love, you need others to love. Mm. There's a part that, that, that came out as well. When God finished creating us, what did he keep? He gave an instruction okay. for us. Okay, yes, and yes. And that's being part of being, having the image of God. God's ruling over us. He gives us the same experience right. to rule and tend to the animals. And that which he has created, not animals, but the nature and everything that's within it. So as God is sovereign over the universe, and he as he rules over the universe, he's also saying, now you rule on the earth. Yes. Okay. So, so, uh, so we're not the same as the animals, as no. monkeys. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, but they, they, they're okay, isn't it? No, no, no. God spoke them into being. Oh, okay. Remember what I said yes, in the yes. beginning. God took time <laughs> and he created us. So they are special. Nature is special. Yes. Animals are special. But when it came to man and humans, as he, he, he actually got down, he got dirty. Yeah, and as the Bible says, he created us a little lower than the angels. Mm. And the other thing um, that's important, we, which we also need to know, the breath of life that's in us, that's mm. the only common denominator, is the same breath of life which is in animals mm. and every living being on this earth. But we're set apart from the animals in that we're created in the image of God. Yes. Okay. So that, I mean, like, also if you think of creation. Now, I do think that there were some animals that were created from the ground, but maybe not. Um, I'm just looking for the verse here. Um, but let me see if I can find it here. Okay, maybe we'll, we'll get back to that just now. But... <laughs> What I see in creation is, you know, at the end of the sixth day, like the last act of creation was when God created Adam and Eve. Yes. Sort of like the crowning work of creation. Yes, yes, yes. And I think, so it just shows like the logical order that God created all of this for who? For us. Mm. Correct. So it also puts us in a special, it's like we're not equal to the animals. Mm. Like, and even, I mean, giving dominion over the animals also sets us apart. Being created in the image of God, what, how does that make you feel that we as human beings have been created in the image and not, of God? And not drawn out of verse 24 is the verse that you look oh, at. Verse 24? Verse chapter 1. Uh, and not, oh, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth 
each according to its kind. And it was so, okay, so maybe that's what I was thinking of. Yes. So it's still different mm. how God um, came in um, Genesis 2, verse 7. Mm. Please share more if you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How does it, yeah, you asked a valid question there. How does that um, impact our, our living or your living uh, every day? God has given us the privilege of being stewards of nature. And that in, that's everything on this earth that mm -hmm. he, he gives us. Fortunately, we're not good stewards. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. and we forget that point. Mm -hmm. So, you're saying being created in God's image means we're social, we're relational yes. beings. We also have been given stewardship of the earth, like responsibility. Yes. Um, and I think that's a, it's a, an important one for us to consider. You know, how do we... Are we really looking after this world? Think of Genesis 2.15 where God put Adam yeah. in the garden to tend and keep it. Correct. You know, that's it's part of, we, we, need to, we will be accountable to God for our actions. I believe so. So may, may God help us to, to look after what he has entrusted to us. Um, is there anything else, when it says created in the image of God, what, what else could that mean? Is there anything else that we can share on that? I think God wants us also, as I mentioned earlier, wants to, us to love as He okay. loves. Yes. That's a very important point in, 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 in creation. Mm. We can't tend to the nature, we can't tend to the animals if we do not love as God loves. That's okay. why He created it. Even the plants and everything that He has created. But more so love between us as fellow human beings. Yes, and, and, and as, as God is connected, the Trinity is connected, there's a unity there. Yes. There's also a unity of the human race. Let's read Acts uh, 17. I'm going to read it you, out of the oh NIV yes. here. Acts 17, verse 26. Awesome, awesome verse. Yes, this is a powerful Acts scripture. Acts 17, verse 26. Um, this is the NIV that I'm reading over here. From one man, he, God, made every nation of men. Uh, further, it says in verse 26 of chapter 17, uh, God, well, I'll read it again, from one man, he, God, made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. We, so we see this indication that God created every nation on earth. So there's this unity amongst, uh, 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 you know, the human race. And that is how God intended. Yes, Again, as we weren't, we aren't good stewards of the earth. We're not mm. good stewards of keeping that unity. And you know, we put up, we put up walls, we put up borders and fences, and you know, and that unity often is marred. You know, but God's plan was always for us to be unified. So, you know, that's a, a powerful point. How like, so? We created to love. We've got the capacity to yes. love. Mm. It's part of being created in God's image. We need to love one another. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Malachi. I think it's 2 verse 6 or somewhere in Malachi that God is our Father. And that makes us children. We, we are yes, brothers and sisters. Yes. So how, how we need to keep the unity amongst, we need to love one another. Um, I'm just thinking if we, if we take that to heart, I mean the way we treat someone else who is created in the image of God, I need to keep that in mind. Always. Like mm. here is a fellow being who, create, who is created in the image of God. Yes, even if someone has done something to hurt me, I still, that doesn't give me license to do what I, no. I to just let loose and do what no, I want. No. This is still a being created in the image of God, God's property. And I need to take that into account when I, yeah. when we relate to each other. Yes, definitely. Yes, definitely. So maybe one other thing, just as we wrap up on the image of God, um, I'm just thinking of the, the, the ability um, to make choices. Mm. You know, animals maybe operate by in instinct. Yeah. But I think human beings are different. I'm thinking of Genesis chapter 3 now, mm. where, you know, God loves us, but He doesn't force. Love can't be no. forced. No. Love can't force. Then it's not love. It. Yes. No. It's something else. Yes, you can't mm. define it as love if it's mm. forced. Mm -hmm. So God loves us, but Adam and Eve, you can see part of, I mean, He has perfect beings created mm. in the image of God. They had the power of choice to either choose to mm. obey God, trust Him, what He says, and obey Him, love Him, or choose contrary to that. Mm. So, yeah, how maybe let's chat more about that. How? 
yeah, like that, that is um, still part of how God has made us, the nature of humanity. Mm, mm. I believe God has, has given us that, that ability to, to choose. And uh, somehow that got distorted. Mm. And uh, that's, that's the sad part. And then man's nature has changed. Mm. It's not as God intended it. But God has, has, has uh, given us his nature to, to make decisions for ourselves. And, uh, yeah, it's bad. it got badly damaged. Mm. So there are consequences to, yes. our, to those decisions. I mean, we know Genesis 3. Maybe, maybe let's quickly go there. Mm -hmm. Um, so here, human beings, perfect environment, perfect God, perfect people. Um, well, there was, I'm thinking of Genesis 1.31, when God saw all that he had made, indeed it was very good. But yet they had free choice. Yes. And they chose to use that free choice, unfortunately, to believe the lie of the serpent. Um, and instead of, And maybe there's a lesson there or an important one. When we make choices, are we believing what God has said and making choices in line with that, or are we believing what the enemy mm. is saying? Mm -hmm. um, so, Adam and or Eve was saying that you no, know, God said we can eat of the fruit of the the fruit of the trees in the midst of the garden. God has said, okay, let's let's quickly read that rather from verse two, um, Genesis three from verse yeah. two, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. So there were choices and consequences to that. Yeah. Um, then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Mm. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pl pleasant to the eyes and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves covering. And then ultimately, maybe we can just jump there to verse um, 21 to 24. So, then it says, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Praise God. They Instead of clothing themselves, God says, no, don't worry, I'll, I'll clothe you. Mm -hmm. Then the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put his hand, put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim, that's angels, at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So, in, in my understanding, when Adam and Eve, they weren't allowed to partake of the tree of life anymore after yeah. they had disobeyed God, so their eternal life was forfeited. Correct. So now that they, they had made this decision, the consequence was they couldn't live eternally in that state. No. So, yeah, you know, what what can we take from that? How can yeah? You know, what does that mean to us today? I think the the, <clears throat> the obvious thing is that sin had an impact, you know, um, and the immediate impact was just this: that man's nature was was not changed. You know. Okay, so we're talking about the nature of humanity. Yes, so that's yeah, important. Yeah, so, so, come back to the nature of humanity. You know? Yes. So, so what do you believe about that? But, okay, so the nature of humanity was changed after yeah. this. So, so how did it change? What, what was happening? There's a vast many things that happened. First yeah. of all, they did not have that right to live eternally. Okay. Mm. And that needed to come back. Okay. Love itself became marred yes. and distorted. Selfishness started taking yes. over? all of those bad things think and of the sins of the flesh and all these things started and they, and they couldn't get back into the garden. They couldn't get back into the garden. And I'm Thank thinking in, in the garden of Eden there, when the Lord was asking, okay, Adam, where are you? Mm. You know, straight up, then selfishness had taken yes, root. Yes, then, yes. then they started blaming. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> the blaming it's the woman. the woman. No, it's the serpent. <laughs> yes. um, and ultimately and they were saying it's God. God. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that 
said there was um, disharmony in relationships. There was selfishness. Yes. There was fear, fearing God, like they were hiding from yes. God. I mean, they'd never experienced that before. Mm -hmm. Became aware that they did not have this covering which mm -hmm. God has given them, that's, which is part of his, his image. And they didn't need clothes. Mm -hmm. and they, that, that image disappeared. Mm. And it's, 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 it's interesting to, to, to note that when God asked the question, or they, they said, but, you know, they found themselves naked and they mm. had to hide mm. and make clothes mm. from the leaves. Mm. So, yes, I think everything changed to the point where we have a sinful nature. Mm. Okay. That, that makes sense to me. Our default setting. <laughs> That's a, it's not our default. Our default is to be like God, yes, I yes. think, Pastor. Our, our, and our, now, yes, true. Now it's... This was our corrupt... It's, yeah, it's a corrupt hard drive. drive. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Yes. And, um, I mean, with, with, that, with that came also the fact that we are, um, you know, we were kicked out of the garden. You know, we can't live any longer, but also the relationship that you have with one another. Oh, we yes. saw it in Eden, yes. and we saw the very first two brothers, they, you know, uh, Cain and Abel, uh, Cain Murder. killing Abel, you know, so immediately we could see that effect there on. But yet in that, even though um, Adam and Eve, they sinned, they covered themselves, self-righteousness, God said, I have a better plan. Yes. Tell us you know, more about the better plan. I've got, I've got a better plan. You know, um, this is, this is, this is, this is what you have in mind, all right, for your nature. But I want to restore you. Let, let me, let me have a go at this. Can I can just take yeah, one step yeah. back, please? Sure. I was speaking about the sinful nature, mm. and this is a bad thing which I neglected to mention just now. Is, is our tendency mm. in this nature of ours is to sin. We don't have that tendency to do good and to love and all that is honorable and to have the character of God that we had. Now it's marred. And this tendency of sin comes and hooks onto what you're saying, Pastor, now mm -hmm. with this better plan mm -hmm. to, 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 to restore us back to where we want to, to the original plan. So, mm -hmm. so after the image of God was marred in us through sin, now we've got a tendency to sin. Yes. Mm -hmm. So how does God get us? Um, so there's good news. <laughs> so that's the yeah. bad news. <laughs> but praise God, there's, there's good news. Good news. And, and God had a plan already. So what is, the, what is that plan? How, how is God going to help us out of our corrupt nature, let me say, to get back to what he wants it or what he planned it to be? Mm -hmm. I see, I see he's, he's got his Bible there. He's moving. Yes, please. God made a promise. Amen. What, what do and you believe? Can I read it? Please. please. Tell, us, tell us what change. you believe. Genesis 3 verse 15. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. And he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Mm. That to me is not quite 100% there. It says actually he shall crush your head. Mm and shall bruise your heel, mm. in, in, in some translations, and that mm -hmm. makes more sense to me. Mm -hmm. Satan is crushed. Mm. Christ was never crushed, yes. he was bruised. Mm. That's and a good this point. is a promise from after Adam and Eve sinned. We have that promise there, yes. even until today, we have that promise. God is, has promised his son, and through his son, his only begotten son, we can have the eternal life. So mm -hmm. we're saying this promise in Genesis 3 verse 15 was picturing the Savior, the Correct. Messiah to come. Yes. And what I, what I find beautiful about that is it was right there when they had sinned. Yes. God didn't say, well, Let you, you better suffer a little mm -hmm. bit more and no. then I'll, I'll, I'll give this. you some hope later on. Mm -hmm. But while it was right there in that conversation, in that time, God said, you know, you know, hope is coming, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it's 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 so wonderful. Even though our characters and who we are is marred by sin and it's corrupted, oh, that that hope, that 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 hope that 
okay, our characters, but now I'm going to look, you know, Christ gives, gives yeah. us that assurance that, yes, you have fallen, yes, you have sinned, not you, the person, maybe, yes, you, the person, but you as a human race. And now Christ comes and say, I recognize, we, we he's not taking away the fact that, you know, there, there's a, uh, I mean, immediately anyway, uh, away the fact that there's an issue, there's a, all consequences, you know, um, but he's saying, look here, that is the consequences, that is what happened, but here, yeah, take my robe, <laughs> take my character upon you, and I think this is a better way, but why are we so hesitant to taking that, uh, 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 I mean, that better way, isn't it a better way? No, no, because we have the sinful nation. Uh, nature. nature, that sinful nature forces us to rebel against everything which has to do with God. Mm. We have this tendency to rebel against everything. Mm. Mm. But I want to read something here. Although we are born with a sin, a sinful tendencies, God does not reject us. Mm. And here's the thing that I read one day. He sees that he sees what we can become mm. through His grace. Amen. Not he for sees as we in are. us. No, He yeah. sees what we can become, mm. Mm. and that to me is mind blowing. Sure. Yes. It's, yes. He doesn't yes. see me. Yes. What I am now, yes. He sees what I can become in Him in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And. And, and, and this is what I cling to. I cling to Jesus Christ. I cling mm. to Him for, his, for, th in the, for this promise that He made. And we have seen that Jesus has come. So the hope is truly there. Mm. We can go get the nature back one day, mm. which He created us mm. with. Mm. And I'm just thinking, if, what if we had to see people in those same eyes? Yes. yes. Say, so, you know, yes. I, I'm not going to see you as you are now. And please don't see me as I am. <laughs> but let us see each other through God's eyes, what we can become by His grace. Yes, Beautiful. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that would you know, transform our relationships with totally. each other. Like we won't be writing people off saying, you know. But, but if we are created in the image of God, we should be looking at people like that. I mean, we should be. Because we are now, we've got that, the, the image of God is in us. So now, I mean, we've covered this, but, but, but we should be looking at people um, as, oh man, I, I get what you did there, um, but I'm not going to attach you to the act. You know, it's yes. like God is, is but we're but, but, not going to define you by but, this. But define you by that. Mm. You're still created in the image yes, of God. Beautiful. You know, and but it's, it's very difficult because if, if, if we want to know who are you, the very first thing, okay, what do you do for a living? Tell us about your career, because we now we take that and this is who you are, yes. you know. But that's not how God. We label you. We label you, whether you were president or, you know, just a pastor, <laughs> you know, wherever you find yourself on the so-called social ladder of, of life. God is like, no, there's no such thing. You are my children. I love you. I care for you, you know. And yeah. this is who this is who you are. I'm just so that that's making me think now of you know how do we view people? Like, what is the how do we define people? Sometimes mm. we define people by, okay, what race are you? Mm. What language are you? What culture? Mm. What status? What work? What car mm. you drive? And all of those things are, are such superficial ways to, to sum up someone. Mm. And I'm thinking, if we could see people as fellow beings created in the image of God, yo, that would be, mm -hmm. and, and let's say fellow beings who have the potential to be restored yes. into the image of the, the full image of God. I mean, the way we um, motivate, encourage each other, you know, it can help transform our, our, our relationships. I want to say that, and I'm taking it a bit further, once we've given our lives to Christ and we are baptized, don't we stand up in a new person in Jesus Christ? Yes, mm -hmm. a new creation. And that's mm -hmm. a new creation. Yes. Mm -hmm. That should be the start of our changing our nature. And Being one of my again. prayers is that God will take, in my personal prayer life, is that God will take my, that sinful nature mm. and start replacing His godly nature in yes. me. Yes. So, and this is our, I know we're off the beaten track here, but this is our part of 
sanctification, mm. changing our yeah. lives to become more like Christ, yeah. having the mind of Christ. Yes. Yes. So that our nature with God's grace will change so, on earth, but eventually we will have this glorified body mm -hmm. when he comes. And, and that's like the, this being born again experience when we accept mm. the, the fulfillment, the person mm. who fulfilled yes. Genesis 3 verse 15, the person who was represented by the tunics of skin in Genesis 3.21, when we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, when we surrender to Him, place our faith in Christ, I believe the Holy Spirit does that miracle of conversion. Yes. And th there's a number of ways to describe this. Also, our hearts are renewed mm. in His image. That's right. We are born again. Mm -hmm. We are new creatures in Christ. The old man has died. Yes, and mm. the old man has died. That's even better. Mm. I love that. You know, the old man has died. We, ha we are alive. You know, we, ha we have... Um, Think of Romans 6 verse 4. Let's quickly maybe go there. Um, John 3 also speaks when Jesus is having this conversation with Nicodemus mm. about you know, being born again, born of the Spirit. Um, Romans 6 verse 4 also puts it beautifully. Um, when, and you were talking about when we baptize, let's read from verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, when are we baptized into Christ Jesus? When we accept Him as our mm -hmm. personal Savior, mm -hmm. were baptized into His death. Therefore, we were buried with Him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. Mm -hmm. Like you know, being born again. For, for me, that something that has made sense to me um, the last few years is how central and important being born again is that conversion experience yes. is it's the transition from death to life or from the old man to the new man and only when we are i believe when we are created in god's image or uh, when we are born again let me say or recreated in his image then we have the capacity to really love selflessly yes we can operate outside of our sinful nature Although Satan will attack us For sure. and try and mar this. The flesh is still there. <laughs> yeah, the flesh is still there. And, and that is where we need to die to sin every single day mm -hmm. and ask Christ to restore us and do not, not to give up on us. It's sort of a daily experience a we daily need. daily experience, yes. So, so as you're probably landing the plane now, as you say, <laughs> the proverbial plane, but <clears throat> we, have a, we have the idea now that yes, we, we know where we come from. Something happened, sin. Um, now we're living this life. Um, and God is going to restore us to that previous yes. or the original state. What we had lost through what sin. We is lost. But while we are living now here on this earth, um, there's no need for us to continue in this Yes. In this, in this thing, because now He has promised us through the power of His, the power of His Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a powerful thing. Yes. The very God that spoke into life, this world, He's speaking and He's wanting us to recognize, man. Even though you are without form and void at this moment, your sin, because that's how we probably yes. feel, you know. God saying, "Allow me to create in mm. you a, a new, a new man." You know, and our uh, and with that will come better relationships with Definitely. one another. And I think we God also wants to restore that relationship. He wants to dwell with us, with Him. That relationship yes. with Him. He wants to dwell with us again. You know, but while we are here, there is still living that needs to happen. Right? It's it's uh, it's a new life, but it's not all doom and gloom. No, it's not all doom and gloom. And and that that is exciting for me that. We can have a new life, you know, we don't have to be slaves to sin, to sin mm. and to our sinful nature. Mm. Thinking of just a little bit later in Romans, yes. how we need to live according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. No. Mm -hmm. You brought that up as yes. well. And I'm thinking of Galatians 5, you know, the works of the flesh compared to the fruit of the spirit. If we allow, if we allow the Holy Spirit to, to that we, we are not living according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit, God will produce through His, by His grace and through the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit those beautiful characteristics. 
but we need to ask for the Holy Spirit. We need to yeah. ask for these, the, the fruit of the Spirit. We need to ask for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we, if we do not ask these things, God's not going to force it on us. Mm. We need to ask Him. We need to show God that we love Him. And by doing that, we also ask Him to become more like Him. And that is by the fruit of the Spirit. And that changes our nature to what we're going to be one day. Beautiful. Like yes, God's plan of salvation is so complete. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. what, what we've lost through sin is restored through Christ, through His wonderful work in our lives. And, and He's given us wonderful promises. Psalms 84 verse 11. It says, No good thing mm -hmm. will He withhold from them that walk, walk uprightly. uprightly. Yes. Right? So there's a goodness. You can get it, right? But your righteousness allow me to clothe you with yes. my righteousness. Yes. That's right. So... Yes, again, we are here, but God is still with us. Even in, he, he wants, he, he hates the, the, as we say, we, he hates the sin, Not but the he sin. loves the sinner. Yes. All right? And even while we are, man, while we are sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Right? While we are walking, we're walking in this life, Christ died for us, and he has given us um, that promise. It's, it's making me think that we mustn't try to fix ourselves like Adam and Eve, when they were clothing themselves with those fig leaves. Mm. We must allow God. God can fix us. Amen. He is the ultimate yeah. restorer. He, is, he can recreate us in His image. He's mm. the creator. Yes. And let us allow Him through the gospel to, to do that beautiful work. It's, we just have to make ourselves available through faith in Christ. He's the one that does the work. He's the one that can complete that beautiful work in our lives. Mm. Um, maybe as we wrap up, Uncle Dion, is there anything, I know you've, you've looked at this subject, we've talked about things, is there anything you want to, to end off with, you just want to, to share that you think, oh, I really want to share this, either with the church or just on this topic as we wrap up? I think I've said most that I wanted to say, but uh, I think we need to make Christ part of our lives every single day. If we do not walk with Him, if we do not spend time in His Word, spend time in prayer, we will not gain that new body or that new nature that we're talking about. We do need to be with Him every single day and live it, not just make it a theoretical okay. thing. In practice, we need to live it. Satan will not make it easy for us, believe me. There's certain things in my life that I still battle with, but that's Satan's way that he doesn't want to give up. Mm -hmm. But I believe today mm -hmm. Christ died for me mm -hmm. and my hope is to be with him one day. Amen. Amen. That's all that matters to me is to be with Jesus Christ one day. Beautiful. I Thank you so much. Um, like I've appreciated this conversation today. And as we continue um, the the conversations that are coming up ahead, I'm thinking of the experience of salvation, mm -hmm. growing in Christ, mm -hmm. you know. So and they're, they're all, they're, they're interrelated. Very much so. Um, and it's important to understand, as we've looked at today, the nature of humanity and how we can become by God's grace. I think that's yes. going to stick in my mind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, uh, John Alstadt, uh, for being here. Uh, I know that uh, it was a blessing for you. I hope. Definitely. It's a great <laughs> and, uh, privilege. Uh, thank you so much for being our seventh, our lucky number seven. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, God bless you in your ministry and uh, your family as well. Thank you very much, Pastor. So thank you so much for joining us for this episode in our I Believe podcast series. Please join us next time for the Great Controversy Conversation, an important one as well. But before we close, I'll ask Uncle Dion, can you say a prayer for us as we close? Thank you very much. Kind and loving Heavenly Father, what a privilege it is to study your word, to contemplate what the nature of you, of, of you, you are and how you created us and to think about this. Amen. Lord, what a day it is to look forward to that you are going to renew our bodies and our minds Amen. and in a new creation. Lord, I ask that you will guide us as we walk with you each and every day till the day you come is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.
please join us again next time. Thank you, friends. Thank you for joining us. And I'm sure you've got questions or even comments. Please feel free to send an email to the email below or reach out to us on any of our social media outlets. We are so, we were so glad to have you interact with us and we are praying for you as you discover what you believe.